when you talk to anybody who's a little older and maybe has the wisdom that goes along with age if they're fortunate, they know perfectly well that the most of the significant and sustaining meaning that they've found in their life is a consequence of of truly of reciprocal service to others and voluntarily undertaken responsibility. That shouldn't be regarded as a limit in some sense on the quality of your life. You know, people think of marriage as a unnecessary, bureaucratic, ridden, patriarchal arrangement that's nothing but oppression. And they think of children as nothing but excess responsibility. And that's utter rubbish. You could make the same case, I suppose, about career and education. It's like, those are opportunities, man. And they're opportunities to do something significant with your life. And you're going to need to do that because you're going to encounter periods of suffering, intense suffering, when it's difficult for you to make sense out of the logic of existence. And what you have in those situations is, if you're fortunate, you'll have the goodwill that you've generated as a consequence of being a upstanding, productive, and generous individual and citizen. And then perhaps you'll have a little arc that can sustain you through the worst storms of your life. And this is something that conservatives really can tell to young people, is you're going to find the sustaining meaning of your life through responsibility. And that is the case. I certainly saw that time and again as a clinical psychologist in all my practice, helping people sort out the desperate chaos of isolated and lonely lives pointless lives, lives that were expended in futile isolation and in resentful rebelling against the imposition of any responsible order, instead of carrying that forth forthrightly and understanding how integrally that voluntary commitment is associated with, with sustaining meaning. And you're going to need it. And mark my words. Imagine that you're miserable, and then imagine that you're miserable in your marriage, and then you might say, well, are you miserable because you're ill-constituted psychologically, or are you miserable because your relationship isn't what it should be? And the answer is both. And so then you might ask yourself as well, do you think you could be sane for any length of time if you went through your life and you had no intimate relationship and you had no children? and the close family bonds that that would entail, and you had no parents or siblings, and you had no friends, and you had no social community whatsoever, could you still be well integrated psychologically? And the answer to that is clearly no. We know, for example, that you can punish people intensely, even if they're very antisocial, by subjecting them to solitary confinement, and that in itself shows how dependent psychological well-being and sanity is on proper nesting within a hierarchically structured social community. And so then, it's probably better to think of both identity and sanity in a rather musical manner. You know, in a great symphony, every note and every phrase has its place within the totality that's defined by the whole of the piece. And every part plays its part in the magnificence of the whole, let's say. And so if you're a popular child, you can play well with others, and that means that you can adopt shared and socially negotiated frameworks of identity. And if you're a well-constituted and popular and desirable adult, in all likelihood you have a long-term intimate relationship. You have children or siblings and parents, and you've established good relations with them, and you keep each other mutually in check and mutually motivated and mutually sane. And then you have friends who are surrounding you who are contributing to that sanity and then your family and your friends and your marriage are integrated into a broader community and maybe you adopt your civic identity in relationship to that broader community as all of you are doing tonight merely by attending this event you've decided that you're going to step outside the narrow confines of your subjectively defined identity and contribute in some manner to the integrity of the whole and all its parts and then above the local civic community is the level of the state, and then the level of the nation, and then the level of the international order. And all of those have to be in sync and in harmony in some real sense for any individual within that entire hierarchy to be truly sane. How sane do you think you could be in the middle of a war fought between your nation and another nation? And I'm afraid you all might have the opportunity to find out sooner rather than later, although I hope that that's not the case. 
And so I predicated the conservative manifesto on the proposition that what conservatives have to offer young people is a much more comprehensive view of what constitutes identity than this idiot solipsistic claim that you define yourself subjectively like a two-year-old and that you can demand that people treat you according to how you feel, whatever that means, in, in opposition to the identity that you would negotiate as a fair player with other people. And so conservatives can say to young people, look, you want to find meaning in your life. You want to find a meaning that sustains you through catastrophe. You want to be able to be a resilient person. You want to have worthwhile things to do. And you're going to find that primarily in the service that you grant to others and in the responsibility that you voluntarily shoulder. And that's a much different story than you get to be whatever you want moment to moment because of how you feel and that all constraints placed on your hedonic short-term self-satisfaction are to be regarded as nothing but the manifestation of power and tyranny. That's such a demoralizing viewpoint, especially for young people. way you restore the moral authority of your nation is by restoring your moral authority and and your moral authority in relationship to the relationships that you have get your act together you know your nation is founded on the principle that each person is a sovereign citizen and a creator of the future and someone who's made in the image of god someone who wrestles the chaos of possibility into habitable order using love and truth and the reason you have the rights you have is because those rights are, in some sense, fun fundamental uh, consequences of that divine capacity. And you might ask, well, do you believe that? Well, to the degree that you abide by the dictates of your state and to the degree that you treat other people as if they're worthwhile in and of themselves, then you do believe it. And I would say, well, believe it fully. Act it out. Put yourself together. Don't lie. Pick up your responsibility and move forward as forthrightly as you possibly can. Repair your relationships. And if enough people do that, then America will reestablish the moral authority that's not only that's required and requisite. And I don't think there's any other way of doing it. You know, the leftists talk about the long march through the institutions because they tend to be top-down power mongers on the radical left front. And there's a longer march, which is the long march through the individuals. And that's the march that conservatives and centrist liberals need to focus on. Redemption is an individual issue in many regards, even though we have to be nested in our social communities. And it's an individual responsibility, so evaluate your sins and clean them up. And sort out your relationships, and then you can expand outward into the civic community. And you can have a positive influence there. There's no other way of doing it that's real. All the rest of it's just facade and 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 treachery.